Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. My guest saw a vision of Messiah when she was just five, and a supernatural substance got on her that changed the trajectory of her life. Better yet, this same supernatural substance will get upon you and change the trajectory of your life. Next. Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We recognize that you are here. This is your platform. Take over. <laughs> oh, Holy Spirit, you've been here to all day, and right now at this show, we ask you to show yourself strong. Your people need so many things right now, and you are going to demonstrate the reality of Jesus and the kingdom. Yeah. Thank you. My guest right now is Ginger Ziegler. She was raised in an abusive, non-Christian home. Her life was filled with fear and terror. But one day, a woman took her to a meeting, and she had a vision and saw the Messiah. Yeah. Tell me about that encounter, Ginger. It was amazing. It was a tent meeting, and so there was sawdust all over the floor, and people were everywhere. I'd never been in anything like that. And I was very frightened because I, we weren't allowed to go to church. So, and I was listening to the man, I guess, preaching, but I didn't know that. I didn't know it was preaching. And I kept hearing the word Jesus there, but I'd only heard those words in cussing. <laughs> so I didn't know what was going on. But the next thing I know is the top of the tent went totally away and everything went away. All the people went away, and I was going up, 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 and I didn't know what was happening because I, I hadn't read the Bible. I had no knowledge, and mm -hmm. but I looked up, and there was Jesus, and He revealed Himself to me on the cross, but He was looking right straight in my eyes. I mean, His eyes were in my eyes, and my eyes were in His eyes, and I was, I was a little girl, but I was just like looking at Him, and His blood came down as I was just just looking at him. I was just standing there like this. I was just looking at him. He never said a word, but something so miraculous happened to me. I was so changed. It was, he came, this blood came down. And then I don't know how long I was gone. I didn't even know I was gone. We knew nothing about visions or being t transported anywhere. And, and so the next thing I know, I looked around and everybody was there. And I was back in that little, we were sitting on two before benches. And I was like, I don't know what happened, but I was afraid to say anything. So the lady took me home. And when I got home, I used to stand on a little stool beside the stove where my mother cooked. And I was going, Mother, let me tell you what happened. And I was trying to tell her. And my mother, of course, she wasn't born again, so she didn't know what I was saying. And I was going, Can you tell me about it. I said, but he was, and his blood got on me, and, and I was just, I was just like this. And she was going, yes, dear, because that's all she needed to say. I took my grandmother's, I still have her Bible today. I took my grandmother's old Bible, hmm. and I was looking, I said, I got to read it. I got to read it. I got to read about this Jesus. I had such a hunger. I'm telling you, I was totally transformed. Well, in 71, oh. it got better. Oh, it you did. went to heaven. <laughs> What happened? It was really cool. <laughs> I heard somebody preaching. It was a Baptist preacher, and he was preaching about being filled with the Holy Spirit. And I thought, hey, that's cool. I don't know what that is, but I want it. So I went and got in the prayer closet. You know, I read Matthew 6. It said, go get in the closet. You literally closet. went into a closet? Well, of course I did. It okay. says so in the Bible. <laughs> that's OK. I did, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just read it, and I thought, oh, OK, I need to do that. So anyway, I went and I got in the closet. And I was just, just in there, and I really didn't know what to do. And so the next thing I know, I was, boom, instantly. I was in heaven, and I didn't know that. We didn't believe that. We didn't think God did those things. But when it happens to you, you start really believing. And so I was 
on the streets of gold and I knew where I was and I was still me. It's really cool. You can be you there. It's awesome. And so I was laying like this and my fingertips were actually touching his toes. But up there you can see everywhere all at the same time and you just know stuff. It's different in the spirit realm. And as my fingertips were touching his toes and I was worshiping and I could see him, but I only saw him from about here down. The throne was huge. And as I was, I'm down this way, but I could still see the throne and I could see his clothes. And I was amazed because I thought everything in heaven is white. You know, you think holiness white, but it wasn't it had this beautiful color that I've never seen a color here like that. But I realized, hey, his throne is made out of love. It's what is that material? And then his clothes, his robe, it was love. And it was like iridescent, I guess you could say. It was just like, because love was just doing this everywhere. And if it's not air we breathe up there, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's love. Okay, whatever we breathe up there, we're breathing this love and this I'd love. I'd much rather it. breathe love than oxygen. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. It's really cool. <laughs> and so as I'm just worshiping and I was just like, hey, you love me. Oh my God, you love me. You love, I was just so overwhelmed. I was like, I've been saved since I was a little girl and I didn't even know you love me. I didn't know what was happening. And this love got all in my skin and it got my hair. And I, I was like, my veins, I was looking and I was like, that's not blood in there, that's love. And this love was just all over the place. And so all this love got me, got me, got me, got me. And then it was me. I can get excited, can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> and so I jumped up, nobody was there. It was just me and him. And so all of a sudden I went, God loves me, God loves me. And then I had this thought, cause you can think up there, you know, and we were communicating, but we weren't talking. I mean, I just knew what he was thinking. He just knew what I was thinking. And we were thinking back and forth, you know, like faster and lightning. And so I said, Lord, Lord, I said, they don't know you love them. I, I got to go all over the world. I got to tell everybody. I got to convince them. Even if they're saved, if they're not saved, they don't, they do not know you love them. I was, I was trying to convince them <laughs> that they didn't know. <laughs> so I said, Lord, you got, you got to let me go. I got to go tell my children. I got to tell everybody. And so I, the next thing I know, I'm back in the closet and I thought, I've been gone. I didn't know I'd been gone until I got back. And so I went flying out of the closet and my husband and kids was in the kitchen and I went full blast. I was just running toward them and they were, they were like, what? they started screaming and they fell back and I was going, what, what? I didn't know what they were yelling at. And so I was like, go get in the closet and you can go to heaven. It was so <laughs> simple. <laughs> hey, I want to go in your closet. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, ah, and I was going, no, what's the matter with you? Go get in the closet, go get in the closet. And, and you just, you just start praying and you go to heaven. You got to go to heaven. You got to experience it. You don't know God loves you. And they were like, Oh, we know God loves us. We're born again again. And I said, no, you don't. Let me tell you, you do not know. And they were, and I said, what are y'all yelling about? And they go, you're going. I said, where? I don't see nothing. And I didn't see a thing. I was looking, you're glowing. I said, what kind of glowing? And I thought, is this like Moses did that time? But I was so, I was so hyper. So in a little while, somebody knocked on the door and I thought, boy, somebody else, I can get them to go get in the closet. <laughs> <So> <laughs> This is a true story, y'all. This is not, <laughs> I can this tell. Is not embellished. <laughs> and so I ran to the front door and this girl by the name of Lila was there and I opened the door and I was going to scream, Lila, go jump in the closet. And so I opened the door and she goes, ah! and she fell backwards with nobody catching her all the way down on the sidewalk. And I was screaming, get up, go get in the closet so you can go to heaven. <laughs> and she was going, Ginger, what happened to you? What happened to you? You're going. And I said, I can't see it. All I can do is just tell you, hurry up and go get in the closet. And she said, what's in the closet? And I said, I don't know, but that's how you get to heaven. <laughs> Ginger, for 14 days, yeah. you walked 
in such supernatural love and compassion. Oh. It was almost like you were living in heaven, but you were in your earth suit on earth. Tell me about the policeman. This policeman was directing traffic, so we had to stop. And I just looked up at him and I was like, I gotta tell him, he doesn't know God loves him. I jumped out of the car, John was having a fit. What are you doing? I, I gotta go tell this guy. So I run, this policeman, I grabbed this policeman like this and I said, sir, God loves you, he loves you. And this policeman is like, you know, he's got the gun and all that, you know, I kind of shouldn't be doing this. And John's going, oh my God, they're gonna take her away. <laughs> you know, cause she's, I was doing crazy things all the time like that. And this policeman was like, ma'am, get back in the car. I'm, I'm directing traffic. And I said, no, sir, I'm can't get back in the car. I said, don't you understand what I'm trying to tell you? I said, you do not know that God loves you. I am here to you tell told you. The I you told the policeman. I told the policeman that. Well, he said, get back in the car. And you said, no, I have to tell you God loves you. <laughs> <laughs> that went on for 14 days. <laughs> When we return, I want Ginger to tell how to overcome accusations yes. of the devil. Amen. This is one of the ruling things that the devil is trying to do to people. Yeah. He's accusing in ways that you think are real, in ways that you think uh, you've done wrong, mm -hmm. but you are going to be able to overcome it Everyone viewing right now and in the studio audience, every time, be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Ginger. You titled your brand new book, His Blood Speaks. Tell me why you titled it that. And I said, Lord, what is, what do you want it called? And he said, call this book, His Blood Speaks. He said, because it will help even people that maybe don't go to church or maybe just really, because it'll be a drawing for them to find, whose blood are they talking about? You know, because Blood, your blood, my blood, anybody's blood has a voice. And Abel proved that in Genesis because when Cain killed him, he ends up where his blood starts speaking. God starts walking around and he says, hey, I hear blood talking and it's saying vengeance. And so then we come over to Hebrews 12, 24 and 25. The scriptures say, do not refuse him that speaks because he speaks his blood speaks better things than that of Abel Jesus's blood he said do not refuse him that speaks and the wording the way it was worded there and so the Lord said I want you to say his blood speaks and it'll be a drawing and then add the part where it says it's your victory if you understand this, but it's Satan's defeat because Satan understands, I guarantee you he understands it. What it, happens in the invisible world when you say, I plead the blood of Jesus to the demons that are watching? Well, it just scares the living daylights out of them because you know what? They know because in Revelation 12, 11, Jesus said, you want to overcome Satan? Let me tell you how to do it. Now that's in Texan, <laughs> that's on KJ. But he said, let me tell you how to do it. He said, you learn how to speak the power of the blood because of my resurrection, because of the blood, his blood, his blood from God Almighty was the Father's blood, Almighty, Almighty God's blood, because Romans 6, 4 says it was the glory, and we're waiting for the manifestation of the glory and the presence of God. It was the glory of the Father who raised Christ from the dead. That's the power of the blood of Jesus Christ because of the Father. And so when His blood starts speaking, Satan has no access. What do you do when you're harassed you know, with thoughts and you're accused? How, what do you do about that? Well, I got it really simple because I was faced with this demon, this big old ugly demon thing. 
3.15 in the morning, standing there, and I was like, I knew the scripture, so I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, and the dude just looked at me, and I was like, whoa, hey, Jesus, this is not working, come on, what's going on here? And I was like, okay, I didn't get the right scripture, so then I, you know, I, well, I was like, I was like a gun, you know, here's some more scriptures, and this guy goes, just like that, and I said, <clears throat> Lord, help me. <laughs> Something's going wrong here. I said, do I not have faith? What's the matter? Well, I'm messing up. Yeah. And this is hard to explain, but I've had so many visitations and stuff with the Lord. I, I just learned to follow Him. But it started in my feet. And I'm like, from here, not. he was closer than you are. And this big old dude was just standing there and something started in my feet. And I'm standing there going, Jesus, talk to my face, talk to me, talk to me, tell me what to do. And all of a sudden, I just, and I just took a deep breath and I said, the blood. And that thing went like that. And I thought, hmm, wonder why the scripture didn't work, wonder why the name didn't work. I'm thinking, because my mind's fast, you can tell that. And so then I said, the blood, the second time. I didn't even say the blood of Jesus. <laughs> this demon knew who I was talking about. <laughs> And so this thing walked back and I got really brave. You know, I just squared my shoulders and raised my head. I thought, hey, this is working. I'm gonna learn more about this. <laughs> you know, this was like in the 70s when this happened. And I said it the third time. And when I did that thing, just I'm telling you, it started backing up and I got stronger and stronger and stronger. And I just was walking toward that thing. And I could see because they have the discerning of spirit. So I could see, I see him just like I'm looking at you. And I started saying, the blood, the blood. And so what I've taught people, people that's been in witchcraft, people that's been all kinds of stuff, and they get saved and they're harassed by demons, I said, hey, you can't think of anything else. You don't even know a scripture in the Bible. Just say, the blood. I, I, I like that. <laughs> now, listen, this is very important. Tell Jesus you're sorry for your sins out loud and ask Him to be your Lord and Savior and come and live inside of you, your own words. I want you to pray the benefits of the blood over the viewers right now. Oh, okay, thank you. Father God, right now, I'm asking you to allow the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit to go and touch the people that are at home, the people that are watching, the people that are gonna watch, the people that are here. And Father, we are speaking your life that is in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus always speaks mercy, mercy, mercy. Your blood is speaking, speaking, speaking that we have been redeemed, that we have been set free, that we've been justified, that we've been bought back from that evil Satan, that you paid the price in full for us. I'm telling you, the blood of Jesus Christ, the power is bringing life to us right now. Healing, healing is coming. We have healing, we have, we have what we need. Relationships are stored. Your blood speaks life, life, life. We're being cleansed on the inside. Your blood is washing, 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 washing away bad memories, washing away hurts and pains. Your blood is life. You have come to give us life and give us more life and to give us life more abundantly. And you have just brought us back, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, you're restoring us. Your blood says that we're being restored and we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Now we have this blood covenant. This blood covenant is bringing blessings from our heavenly Father right on us right now. It's just amazing. Lord, we receive, we receive your blood now. We speak the blood, we speak the blood, we speak your blood. Father, we are receiving the riches of your grace because of the power of your blood. Your blood is speaking this peace on us right now. In this chaotic mess we're in right now, Father, we just say, the blood is saying peace, peace. Winds of adversity, be still, because peace is coming. And we have an everlasting covenant. It doesn't just last for a year, it lasts forever. Not just in this lifetime, but in our eternal lifetime with you. And you know, Father, it says we're forgiven. Forgiven, just like we never sinned. Your blood can make us that clean. Your blood makes us that clean. We just thank you, Father God. We just honor you. All of your blood, every drop, that you gave us of this blood 
Oshila Haros Kimene, Indele Shala Rosa, Historian de Lekatos Salamana, Aros Kilava. O Lord, we speak your life, the life, life all over the whole world. People can hear, yes, my blood, my blood, my blood is speaking life. Where there was death, now there is life. Life is coming. Resurrection is coming to dreams. Restoration is coming to children and to marriages, to ministries, to broken hearts. We worship you, Father. We honor you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the ability to say the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. Amen. And I seal these prayers with one word. No, maybe two. The blood. Ha, 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 ha.